What's going on, everyone? My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema, and welcome to my 31 Days of Horror. And today's topic is my top five favorite kills in horror. You got to have a good kill in horror, don't you? We all love our kills. We love our favorites, and there's so many to narrow it down to five. So these five are just ones that really stood out to me personally. You know what I mean? You guys got to let me know in the comments below what your favorite kills are. It can be subjective. You know what I mean? Some of these are going to be very iconic. I'll tell you that right now. But that's why probably maybe that's why they're also some of my favorites. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's not the goriest kill. That's the best kill. I know our minds tend to be drawn to gory, gory, gory. That's what makes a good kill, but not always, right? Coming at number five is Rhodes Kill from Day of the Dead. I came to this movie pretty recently, and I got to tell you, you know, I didn't think it was the greatest film. I do like it. I find Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, I find them a little bit slow. I think Night of the Living Dead may be my favorite Romero film. And I like Zack Snyder's remake of Dawn of the Dead. But coming to the, the but this film, this character was a real douchebag. So the way he gets killed off is just absolutely awesome. We got the zombies ripping apart and no one's taking his bottom half, sliding it apart, taking it away, the feast on it. Then we got that our main zombie character who kind of gives him the salute. I just, this was graphic as hell. I wish I watched this back in the day. It probably would have terrified me or I would have thought that was fucking cool, man. Blood and guts everywhere, but such a great kill. It really stands out for sure. Coming at number four is Marcy's kill in the original Friday the 13th. This has always been my favorite kill in Friday the 13th. Again, Tom Savini bring in it. There's something about axe kills, blunt force trauma. You know what I mean? But I also like the way the scene's crafted. I like how she pulls the bathroom curtain very cycle like you see the axe coming up and the way they sell it with the, the light shaking. You, you know what I mean? The show that someone's really hitting somebody like there's a lot of force behind it. And just seeing that axe in her face and she hits and slides down like she's really dead you know what i mean her eye and jaw almost it drops you know what i mean or the uh the practical effect the way tom savini tom savini built it and everything just so cool it's bloody and watched it on vhs man the friday the 13th on vhs is darker the blood's not as bright it's it, it's darker and that whole effect will sell you so much better than watching a high de definition Blu-ray for sure. But Marcy's kill has always been really fantastic to me, man. Very gruesome and brutal. I couldn't imagine 1980 watching this. That must have been graphic as hell and that and open the door for showing all this gore and slasher films for sure. And a lot of people I know like the Kevin Bacon one better. They like Mrs. Voorhees decapitation better, but I have always liked Marcy's kill. Still my favorite kill in the franchise. Coming at number three is Chrissy's death in the opening of Jaws. I really love this kill, man, because we don't see the shark. The performance of our actress here sells it. That's why you're scared of the shark, because of her performance. Can't be understated, man. The way Spielberg shoots this, apparently he shot it in the, like, the daytime. They put filters on it to make it look like, it, I think, late evening or early, like, early um dawn or whatever you know she's out there swimming and stuff you know when she feels that bite takes her under and it's pushing her back and forth and everything you don't see anything you just see the fear and the panic she's gurgling on her fucking likely blood and water and she's like god please help me help 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 and and spielberg lingers on it you know when she's holding on to the boy you know what i mean it rips her from that and it's drawing her in right at you right at you right at you. and this lingers for a long time of her screeching. I've always liked that where they keep the camera on the person and you think it's going to cut. It's going to stop. God, please, God! But no, right on to her shrieks, her pain. What's happening to her is just absolutely gruesome. Your mind's thinking, connecting the dots under the water, what the shark is doing to her. You're scared for the rest of your fucking life of sharks. I mean, ever since I was like a young boy, I've been terrified of great white sharks. And if Thanks to Spielberg and thanks to this fucking movie. Such a great movie, but man, what a scene, man. It's one of the best scenes in horror history. Coming at number two is Marion Crane's death in Psycho. Iconic as hell. That's how you describe this. I mean, what can you say? The way it's shot and everything, every shot choice is, is just perfect in this. Every frame is just perfect. Again, it's using... 
It's using suggestion. It's using fear of the mind, all that good stuff to make you think that you saw something brutally happen. There's blood everywhere, but really wasn't that much blood, just a little bit. And you don't ever see the knife penetrate her skin. That's something we see later in horror, but it works so well when you don't see it, does it? And this proves it. And the slow build of it all when she's in the shower and the curtain comes open and that music, it's timed perfectly to those really heavy freaking strings. <laughs> Drowned your body with fear, man. It just really, really, really gets to you, right? And another thing that I, I don't know if a lot of people realize that we see a lot more now in horror, but maybe not so much back then, is that first, we never seen someone brutally get murdered. There was Westerns, probably, people getting shot, not that much blood, but here we saw someone get murdered in a shower with a huge butcher knife. It wasn't so much about, you know, stuff that goes on in castles and, and werewolves and vampires and all that good stuff. Now horror is your next door neighbor. Hitchcock brought it out of the castles into contemporary, you know, suburban neighborhoods, a hotel off the side of the highway, highway here in and not only that, Janet Lee was a big actress. She was in movies where she never got killed off. She was the main lead. That's how Hitchcock drew you into this red herring. And seeing a main star being brutally murdered must have been something if I'm projecting myself back to 1960. It'd be like, you know, the biggest actress of now that who never gets killed being butchered in front of your eyes. And then we move it to a different character. So it works on so many levels. Um, the reason he had to film it in black and white because it was the blood couldn't show blood. You know what I mean? So they, they film it in black and white. So it's, it looks less tame, right? Interesting piece of trivia. Interesting fact I always found is that that's why it's shot in black and white. Like he wanted it to be in color Hitchcock. So, and you know, just, just everything else about the movie is really great too, but just this kill it's famous and it will always be famous for the rest of horror, the rest of movie history. And I mean, I think uh, Janet Lee played Marion Crane. She, I think she said too that she was terrified to take a shower for months, just terrified because of uh, filming the scene and everything. You know what I mean? Great freaking kill. Great kill. Coming at number one is Tina's death in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, this death, guys, is fantastic because of the buildup. We already meet Tina. We think she's our main character. You know, she's. We see a little bit of Freddy, that classic jump scare where he jumps up from behind her in the boiler room. Wes Craven's setting an atmosphere, building up the fear. Amanda Weiss really showing how terrified she is. She doesn't want to go to sleep. She doesn't want to have another nightmare. She calls her friends over. There's Nancy and there's Rod and all this. And then she has this another nightmare. And again, it's built up. It's built up with Freddy whispering to her outside, Tina, Tina. And then he goes, Tina, right? And draws her outside. He can, the thing is, he could come and get her whenever he wants, as we find out later. Just toying with her, man. That's what I love about Freddy, is that you have to be so freaking scared before he goes in for the kill. And, and she's likely been dreaming of this guy for like a couple weeks, right? Maybe a week or whatever. And the way he comes around that wall with the long arms just terrified me as a kid. And he's just like, Tina. <laughs> You know what I mean? He's giggling and laughing. And to us, it's not, it's terrifying. It's not scary at all. Or it's not funny at all. Scary. And she really sells it. Freddy is in your bed with you. He's under the sheets with her. That's one shot where he's under the sheets and he's all in silhouette. Rod just sees her freaking out. You know what I mean? And he slices her open and pulls her up the wall. We've never seen anything like that before. In 1984, that was, it's still unique to this day. I mean, the remake tried to recreate their own version of it. And it was lousy because there wasn't enough buildup for, for one thing. And it was just generic. You know what I mean? So instead of dragging her up the wall, her going up the wall, let's just slam her against the wall. And then she'll float up, slice her once. It doesn't work like that, my friends. There was so much buildup. And I can't understate Amanda Weiss's performance. Her screeching and hollering. Help me, Rod. Help me, help me, Rod. Rod, God help, God help. You, you know what I mean? Terrifying. And she's up the wall. She's trying to reach him. You know, she's got her hand reaching out. And then 
Freddy goes for the kill and she drops in a pile of freaking blood. Goes everywhere. Uh, just a crazy kill. It's so creative too. I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street prides itself on creative kills just because of the narrative of Freddy and, and what he's able to do and that he's a, a demon dream stalker. You know what I mean? But always worked for me. Always loved this kill. It's gruesome. Nightmare on Elm Street is a bona fide classic, man. And the best kill in horror history as far as I'm concerned as you guys no, now, but what about you? What are your favorite kills in horror history? You can give me five, 10, 15, that doesn't matter. A couple. Let's just have a good discussion about horror on this 31 Days of Horror. And I hope you guys are enjoying it all. Like, comment, subscribe, stick around for the end card, go down the rabbit hole. I'll put other relatable content there for you guys. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I'll see you next time and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.